Ladies and gents, I'm Rusu Ji Reacts and this is The Day the Dinosaur Died, Minute by Minute, by the channel Coast Gazette in a Shell. 66 million years ago, maybe on a Tuesday afternoon, life was the same as it had been the day before, or a thousand years before, or pretty much a million years before. Things were pretty good for our father dinosaur buddies until a tiny, tiny detail in the sky changed. Oh god, this is gonna be one of those videos. I love it. You know, this type of series. You know, he did the, you know, when you explode a, a you know, nuclear bomb in a city. And then he explains how the process works, you know, minute by minute. Same thing he did with the moon. I guess this is one of those series, but with the dinosaur, this is gonna be a fun video, man. Asteroid impact and everything. Cause because I did a great science channel. I wrote to do quite a few videos from this channel already. I love how, you know, he goes in depth with things. Uh, if you haven't seen my other reaction from this channel, uh, check out the cars as a playlist aggregator for it, because it's that reaction. Check out the playlist too, like all his aggressive production, internet historian, history, CGP Grey, uh, Tier Zoo, and yeah, that's all this one. One of the greatest illusions in life is continuity. 66 million years ago, the continuity of the dinosaurs had been going on for around 165 million years. <laughs> I, like, I like how he started. Because illusion is continuity. Yeah, that, that is kind of true, isn't it? People think things have always been fine at the grander scale, so everything's going to be fine forever. Years already, and it didn't seem this would change anytime soon. The world was warm and pleasant, and most of the land was covered with lush forests and an incredible diversity of trees, flowers, ferns, and trillions of critters. Dinosaurs were ubiquitous and had diversified into hundreds of species of all shapes and sizes. Titanotaurs, large, gentle giants, shared the world with famous beasts like Tyrannosaurus rex or Edmontosaurus. Pectinodon hunted in the undergrowth, while Edmontosaurus wandered coastlines and swamps. An ancient paradise, a world of plenty, full of life. 66 million years ago, maybe on a Tuesday afternoon, life was the same as it had been the day before. Look at that, how he's drawing all of them. Very cute creature and everything. For, for us, if we were there, they would be terrifying. Or a thousand years before, or pretty much a million years before. Things were good for our feathered dinosaur buddies, until a tiny, tiny detail in the sky changed. Oh shit. If there were dinosaurs watching the stars, one night they may have noticed the appearance of a new star, a tiny dot that for many weeks slowly became bigger and brighter. What? Until one fateful... Asteroid lights lasted in the sky for weeks? This few kilometers wide asteroid can be seen for weeks in the sky when it's coming closer to Earth? Damn, I didn't know that. That is a surprising detail for me. I thought, you know, asteroid just, when they see asteroid, it's too late, I guess. The asteroid is close enough that it's gonna collide. I didn't know they could see the asteroid for weeks in the sky, like, oh, look at the star. So, holy shit, if we get ever hit by an asteroid like that, we'll be able to see it in the sky for weeks, I guess. Star slowly growing and growing. All the difference is, unlike dinosaur, we would know that that asteroid is coming to kill us. And, you know, uh, our congressman wasted money on some stupid shit. And space agencies had no money, so they didn't build any defense program. So we are fucked. For a day, it looked like another small moon in the night sky. And then it faded from sight as it dipped into Earth's shadow. For a few more hours, the illusion of continuity was upheld. Until it was not anymore. In the morning, the object suddenly appears again. Now, almost as large as the sun in the sky and growing every moment, heading for the coast near the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh. It takes the asteroid only seconds to pass through the thin layer between space and the ground to make contact, as it enters the atmosphere at almost 60 times the speed of sound. Let's stop time. Here, we see the unnamed asteroid about to commit speciesite. Larger than Mount Everest, it reaches from the ocean high into the atmosphere. That puts higher than passenger planes would fly. <laughs> Holy shit, that puts into perspective, right? Higher than the planes fly, higher than the entire Mount Everest, and Burj Khalifa looks like nothing. Imagine, see, oh my god, that's gigantic. Ah, damn. 
you know, I have real fear for this. I mean, I know this is kind of stupid and probably we as species would uh, create some kind of defense program that would deflect it. I have this fear that one of this, you know, one of these times we'll hear that there's a massive asteroid coming and we have no defense program and now it's too late. By millions of years later, at this moment, the world was one way. In a fraction of a second, it would be fundamentally different. Let's make the transition. As the asteroid hits the shallow ocean and the bedrock below, the energy of billions of nuclear weapons is released all at once as the asteroid vaporizes. A flash of light illuminates the sky as an eerie bright white sphere grows over the Gulf of Mexico. Bedrock melts into seething hot plasma at tens of thousands of degrees Celsius. The thermal radiation from the explosion travels at the speed of light and immediately burns everything within a radius of about 1,500 kilometers, while the energy from the impact pushes so hard against Earth's crust that it loses all strength and flows away from the impact site like a liquid, creating a hole 25 kilometers deep and 100 kilometers wide. The ocean is pushed back for hundreds of kilometers, like when a kid jumps into a puddle. As the crust and bounces back. back, melted and flowing crust forms a temporary mountain stretching 10 kilometers into the sky. An incredible amount of material is blasted into the higher atmosphere or even out into space as much as 60 times the original mass of the asteroid. Whoa. The violence of the strike is felt everywhere. Whoa, the matter is gonna circle the Earth apparently. Damn. So all this, you know, circling debris that's probably gonna fall back and hit again, I guess, uh, so just one rock hitting the earth and having this kind of chain reactions, but there's going to be massive tsunamis too, because water is going to, you know, plummet down in that hole and I guess splashes back. You are on earth within minutes. A magnitude 11 earthquake may be the most 11. powerful quake any living thing has ever witnessed in billions of years. It is so insanely strong that in India, it might have shaken gigantic lava fields and causes volcanic eruptions that would last for 30,000 years and cover half. Look and at causes that world. volcanic eruptions that would last. Look at how the world look at the time. India, Sierra, Africa's cut off like that. Damn. For 30,000 years and cover half of the Indian subcontinent with lava. Even on the side of Earth opposite the impact, the ground still moved by several meters. Nobody would sleep through this day. The gigantic explosion crashes against the atmosphere with unprecedented violence and causes a shockwave that reaches speeds of more than 1,000 kilometers per hour near the site of impact, similar to the hyper hurricanes on gas giants like Neptune. In middle America, basically any soil, vegetation or animal is just shredded into pieces and catapulted thousands of kilometers away. Now, the previously displaced oceans return. As the temporary mountain at the site of impact collapses, a ring of tsunamis as high as one kilometer, enough to cover all skyscrapers humans would ever build, heads in all directions. As they crash into the coasts of the continents surrounding the impact, they will drown thousands of kilometers of coastline. 15 hours later, some of the waves that get refracted around South America will still tower as much as 100 meters into the sky. But we still haven't talked about the worst thing yet. A lot of the debris yeeted into space will orbit Earth for thousands oh, of years. Some may hit the Moon or even Mars. But most of it <laughs> comes right Mars. back. When things fall through the atmosphere at such speeds, they get very hot, as in hundreds of degrees hot. And this happens to millions of tons of material everywhere. This rapidly heats up the atmosphere to insane temperatures. We don't know exactly how hot it got or how long this heat shock lasted, but there are two ideas here. Either the air was heated to hundreds of degrees for a few minutes, or to thousands of degrees for around one minute. In any case, the air became as hot as the inside of an industrial oven. How bad the global effects of this were is contested, but if enough heat reached the surface, a lot of plants and animals would have died very quickly if they couldn't bury themselves or escape into caves. The heat together with raining so many ways to die apparently if explosion doesn't get first of all if explosions wave before that the heat wave doesn't kill you that which travels at the you know speed of light then the explosion bubble will probably kill you around it 
If that doesn't tsunami will if tsunami doesn't then there the rocks are coming to heat up the environment or also hit you in the head apparently one simple rock you know a few kilometers wide rock just hitting creating this kind of chain reaction this just tells us right that our you know our planet is in a way a bit fragile because small small things like just one or few kilometers wide rock can create this kind of chain reaction that screws the entire planet up and, you know, at the start of the video, the way he said it, like, you know, the one illusion is the continuity. That's the problem, isn't it? People even today with the global warming, like, ah, everything's going to be fine. That's the illusion of continuity, like, nothing can bad happen. Millions of years, you know, four millions of years, dinosaurs were fine. Until one day, it all went away like that. Even when it comes to asteroid defense, nobody's actually putting money into that. Even though there is a, you know, apophysis literally coming in 2036 or something like that. It probably won't hit the Earth because the chances are very low. But people bet on the lottery with even worse chances than that, thinking they're going to win. So I guess, you know, people are not even trying to build some kind of asteroid defense program or something. So illusion of continuity is, yeah, real strong, I guess. Debris also may have ignited material on forest floors and sparked wildfires as the Earth rotated under the searing hot blue. In a few hours, massive wildfires were probably burning around the globe. Some of them may have lasted for months and turned Earth into a horrifying, hot, hellish version of itself. Damn. As the day of the impact draws to an end, many of the dinosaurs are already dead, but the worst is still to come. The gigantic plume of vaporized material reaches the upper atmosphere and spreads around the whole globe. That's Together the with the soot from the burning planet... So I guess by now, if you're not dead, now you're definitely gonna die. No photosynthesis. And the aerosols generated at impact, the planet sinks into a deep darkness, with only the remaining raging fires illuminating the scenery. Whatever plants survive the firestorms will now be starved for sunlight as global photosynthesis is temporarily shut down. Imagine if there was somebody there, human or whatever, somehow there's a bunker there he can survive in but can still witness thing. How would he see it? First of all, everything's fine. If he's close to the, you know, uh, Gulf of Mexico, he would see massive ball of explosion. Okay, fine. Everything burning up. Then, uh, you know, tsunamis coming. Okay, so explosion, like a nuclear bomb just went out. Then tsunamis. Then after sometimes, you know, all the asteroids that were flying in the atmosphere now, uh, you know, small pieces of it, rains down and increases the temperature of the, you know, entire planet. So it becomes like a hell or something. Lava flows out, then wildfire comes. Oh, wait a minute, it's not over yet. Now it's going to be total darkness. I mean, how many phases? This is ridiculous. Within days, temperatures crash as much as 25 degrees Celsius. The oceans were especially hard hit. The lack of sunlight killed over 90% of plankton, which formed the basis of the food web of marine life. Ultimately, this would kill off the large marine reptiles and ammonites that used to dominate the seas. The biosphere the survivors now find themselves in is like an alien landscape. Ash, debris and the burned remains of the formerly lush and blooming life cover the ground. The sky is dark and it's cold and fresh food is scarce while fungi thrive. For months and years, the planet will be a hostile and deadly place. The sudden global winter will last for decades. At least 75% of all species on Earth will just vanish from existence. And so, as the day ends, the world is suddenly different. The continuity that went on for millions of years is no more. The era of the dinosaurs is over. Just like that. Eventually, from the ashes of the old world, survivors emerged. Birds that are the direct descendants of the dinosaurs and mammals that would eventually become the dominant animals on the planet. Yeah. Without the asteroid, who knows what life on Earth would look like today? Without the sudden disruption of dinosaur continuity that completely changed the planet and all life on Earth. How would it look, I guess, for 65 or something million years, uh, I think, yeah, yeah, the dinosaurs were there. So I guess, if there was no asteroid coming, I guess they would have been they would have been still here today, because if they were like lasted that long, they would have still kept going on today. 
humans never would have rose out because uh, you know mammals would have never come out of the ground in f- because of the fear of the dinosaurs so humans would not be here i guess i don't know honest we might have never had the opportunity to become what we are today it's not clear how long the human era will last so far modern humans have been around for z- oh sorry 165 million years that's how much dinosaur has been there damn 0.1% of the time the dinosaurs were and in this short amount of time we've achieved impressive feats from making the world our own to reaching space and splitting the atom yet our future and our long-term survival are not a given if we're not careful it could end in an instant like yeah. the age of the dinosaurs ended but in contrast to them we know that our continuity is fragile even if it doesn't feel like it we can be prepared and be vigilant and hopeful if we're lucky our journey will go on for a long long time speaking of journeys we want to address something in the spirit of transparency Kotskazakt has changed in the last 2 years. We've become more than a YouTube channel or animation studio and now also run a paper shop that sells hundreds of thousands of calendars, posters and notebooks. That's not a happy accident. Many of us have a background in graphic design. Paper products are our roots and we actually started out creating posters, books and print infographics. We love that you can touch them, smell them, nerd about small details and printing techniques. Just like the channel, we started small and without great ambition. Step by step, high quality and yeah, people, go to the I guess in the description original video link and from there support this channel by you know buying the merch. This is really good channel. They have 15 million subscribers. If there is a channel that you know I guess deserves the subscribers, this is the one. I love all the science this channel covers. It's a vast array of science, not just space but everything. I love it. Yeah, I mean, you know, this minute by minute type of thing that Kazgaz does, you know, this is not the first time they're doing it. In other videos that like nuclear bomb and everything, it's really eerie when you really process all that because you know how dinosaur died. If you're any, you know, uh, if you're even a bit of scientifically literate person, you kind of know how they died. But small details details here and there you don't know about and when you actually minute by minute process all this, it's just horrifying. I mean just one simple rock few kilometers wide rock created this chain reaction that lasted decades and decades and killed most of the species of the planet and he started the video saying that continuity is an illusion I mean it is and that is a problem today with the global warming people are kind of in denial like come on man global warming is going to kill most of the life on the planet going to leave this planet you know uh, you know Um, create a massive apocalyptic scenario i don't think so people have this mindset like come on world was there before i came world is going to here when i go or something like that people have this mentality continuity basically i mean 165 million years that's how much dinosaur lasted until one day just one rock killed everything then this was awesome All right, people. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction I did. This is linked in the description. Check out the cast of different playlists like Kuz Kuzad in a nutshell reaction. Uh, you know, internet historian, Olisakish production, history, uh, Tier Zoo. Yeah, I'll see you next time.